Hello everybody and Happy New Year. In this tutorial we're going to be showing how to use HTML5 and JavaScript to create slider interfaces. So instead of having people type in numbers or values, you can put a slider on the page. It might be a better choice of interface for you. Who knows? And here's the finished product of the application that we programmed in the video lesson. So you can see we have a nice slider. And we're listening for the values and showing the status of what the values are of the slider as it is changed. And that value can be sent to PHP using Ajax, and then you can put that value wherever you want in MySQL database or a text file database, whatever you got going. We will begin with the basic foundation of an HTML5 web document and write some code to add the slider interface to our page, as well as tie it to JavaScript for our application programming needs. And keep in mind that 2014 is the release date for HTML5 when it goes standard, and it does not work in all browsers yet. I test my HTML5 scripts in Google Chrome usually, but you can choose any browser that currently supports HTML5 tag use. And the first thing we'll do is add the slider to the page, so let's go into the body tag, and we're going to add the input tag, because using the input tag in HTML5 is how we add the slider. And we just use a different type. So when you select type, instead of text like it normally is we're gonna type in range the minimum value for the range is zero so you can just type a zero and put a space and type in the max and the max is going to be equal to 100 in this case you can have a minimum of zero and a max of 20 if you want the next one is going to be value what is the default value that's going to be showing by default and I'm gonna have it set to 50 so my slider knob will be directly in the center of the of the slider control. Then you set the step. The step is equal to, so in my case, I'll set it to 10. You can set it to 1, 5, 10, whatever you want. Now the last thing we'll do is use the on change event. So whenever it is changed, so somebody picks up the slider and they move it to a different value, that is when this event will fire off. And we're going to execute some JavaScript. And we're going to call the JavaScript function that's going to fire off slider change because that makes good sense and between parentheses we're going to type in this dot value and that is how you pick up the value of what the user changed your slider to this dot value picks that up then you can just go ahead and close off your input tag then we'll go down one line and put in a couple of break tags and to make them validate you got to put in the closing slash there on your break tags. Now if I press control S to save this right now and then I press F12 in Dreamweaver to render it in a browser and mine is set to Google Chrome by default you can see it has a slider on the page that I can move and you can see it increments by 10 because of the step that we set to 10 here. Now we're going to add something that's going to help us see the value just for testing purposes like a little status of where the slider value is. So let's type in here slider value equals and then a span tag. So you type in your span tag. We're going to give it an ID equal to slider status. We close the opening span tag and the closing span tag put in place and the value by default was 50. Remember I put a value, a default value of 50. So we'll add that there. And then if you run this in the browser by pressing F12 you'll see that it says slider value equals 50 but when you grab the slider and change it it doesn't affect that so let's make it affect that using JavaScript now go into the head tag of your document and you type in your script opening tag and your script closing tag and in between those is where you type in the JavaScript function so let's type in function and grab the name of that function it's called slider change function space slider change open close parentheses open your curly brace and go down a couple of lines and close off your curly bracket there or your curly brace then here we're gonna put val and val is just going to be a variable name that we're going to assign for this dot value of the slider so when on change of this slider it's gonna send the value of the slider that the user changed it to to this function called slider change and that val, that word val right there is a variable that's going to hold that value. And that's how we can access that value within this function right now. So now we're going to add a line that targets this span tag right here with the ID of slider status. And we're going to make it change. 
to whatever the new value is of the slider when the user changes it. Document.getElementById, we target the slider status tag here, and we affect its inner HTML property, and we give the inner HTML a value of whatever val holds at that time whenever the user changes it. So now let's press Control S, press F12, run it in the browser, and let's change this thing. See what we have now? Now we have an actual application using JavaScript and HTML5 to enable the slider. So what you would want to do here is really, this is just an example to show you how to get that value and listen for it in status, but you would want to use Ajax post to send the adjusted value to PHP or MySQL storage. That way you can store the value of what the user changed it to. So let's press Control S, press F12. So if I'm the user and I'm on your site using your application or whatever and I change this value to my new desired value, right when I change it, you can have it update something in your database or whatever using Ajax. And if you need an Ajax tutorial, there's a nice Ajax programming tutorial using raw JavaScript at developphp.com in the JavaScript video tutorial section. So remember, you can set your minimum and maximum values here, and then the default value using the value attribute, and then you set your steps. So if I was to set this to 2, I would have a lot more steps to my slider. See? Okay, so this has been a video tutorial brought to you by developphp.com, and my name is Adam. I'll talk to you next time.